So welcome back. Um, this is part one in a brand new series on understanding electricity. And in this first video, we're going to talk about the basics of electricity. For those who aren't familiar with electricity and don't quite understand all of the terminology and what, what it's all about. And the goal here is to give you some real world conceptual understanding of what's going on with electricity. So it makes a little bit more sense. Now, I've already done a video in my uh, debunking computer myths series. The first video in that series was on power supplies. And I talked about some of the basic concepts surrounding electricity, specifically uh, voltage uh, and current, and comparing that with um, water pressure in a water system and water flow. And so if, you, if you're unfamiliar with the basics of voltage and current, I suggest you check out that video. Um, I would reproduce it here, but I don't want YouTube to be upset that I'm uh, duplicating material. So um, I'll encourage you to take a look at those, and we're going to uh, springboard from that into this video where we're going to talk about some of the basic components um, used in the electrical system and compare them to the uh, water or hydraulic system. Okay, so now that we have a basic uh, conceptual understanding of things like voltage and current or amps, and power and energy. Let's get a little deeper into some of the components that you will be dealing with in electricity and electrical circuits. And you can see here we have a photo of what probably is very similar to the water valve on your garden hose outside your house. And you can see it's got a handle, red handle on the top that you turn to turn the water on and off. Okay, so this is a very useful analogy uh, in the electrical world because there are some components in the electrical world that operate very similarly to a water valve. So here is a um, diagram of a water valve. You've got the red handle on top and the, the blue arrows uh, depict the flow in gallons per minute of water through that pipe. And you can see the valve is now open. We've got a lot of water flowing through. and as we close the valve, you can see what it does internally is it, it begins to block the flow of water to the point here where it's totally closed, the valve is closed, and there's no water flowing, okay? So um, that concept of uh, closing a valve is very useful in the electrical world, too, because there are some components that basically do the same thing, okay? You've got a controller, which is the handle. You're controlling the controller, and it's affecting another circuit, okay? It's the water circuit being affected by this handle. And you can see it varies. As you turn the valve more and more, the current drops and to the point where it goes to zero, okay? So keep that concept in mind. It's very useful in the electrical world. Now let's look at the valve when it is halfway closed. All right, and think about what's happening to the water inside here when you have 50% of this pipe blocked by this uh, valve, okay? You can see that uh, not all of the water is going to flow through. It's being blocked. So a lot of the water is bunching up here, and it's all trying to get through this small area where before it could all pass through easily. And you can see that the water flow in gallons per minute, the blue arrows are getting smaller and smaller because not a lot of water can get out on the other side. But what's increasing is the pressure, okay? So you can imagine um, you've got, you know, if you've got a lot of water here trying to get out through this small hole, the pressure is going to build up. It's kind of like if you've got a small opening and a lot of people online trying to get through this small door, uh, there's going to be a lot of pe pressure, people pushing against each other. So it's the same thing in the water world and same thing in the electrical world. So when you close completely the valve and there's no water flow, you can see there's a lot of pressure. Like there's, you know, a lot of people want to get out the door, but the door is closed, right? Or a lot of water being pushed here from your water company is being pushed through the pipe, but it can't get anywhere, so the pressure is going to build up. Now... This is very analogous in the electrical world of what's called resistance. Uh, in the water world, you are resisting the flow of water by closing this valve. 
And it's the same thing in the electrical world. You can view uh, electricity flowing through this pipe, and as you close the valve, you are increasing the resistance, the electrical resistance, which is the same as blocking off the water flow, you're blocking off the electrical flow. And resistance is measured in ohms, okay? And a resistor has a symbol that looks like this jaggedy thing, but it's basically just reflecting how much additional blockage you're putting in the path of the electricity coming through this circuit, okay? Now, there's also, uh, in the electrical world, we can simulate closing a valve or varying this resistance, okay? You can have a variable resistor, which is very much like a um, shutoff valve in the water world, where you can control the amount of resistance in this electrical circuit, all right? Now, there's another component called a check valve in the water world. And a check valve is basically, you've got this door here, this triangular thing is a door that has a pivot point right up here on the top, and it's kind of spring-loaded. So um, when there's water pressure pushing water through this pipe, there's enough force to push this valve open and keep the water flowing, okay? So what happens if there's less and less pressure water pressure, this valve is going to tend to want to close because it's kind of spring-loaded. It's trying to close, and only if there's enough water pressure keeping it open will it stay open. So if the water pressure drops, this thing is going to naturally close, and um, there'll be no more water flow, okay? Now, as you can imagine, if you're trying to push water in the other direction, it's only going to force this closed harder which means current can never flow in this direction, only in the other direction, okay? So it can only flow in from left to right. It can't flow in the other direction. And that's called a check valve, okay? It only allows water to flow in one direction. And this is very analogous in the electrical world to what's called a diode. And the diode only allows electrical current to flow in one direction. And if it tries to flow in the other direction, it will be blocked. And this is the, the um, diagram for a diode. And it can only flow from this left-hand side to the right-hand side. And if it tries to flow in the other direction, it won't. Okay? Now, this concept of a water valve is extremely useful in the electrical and electronics world because there's a lot of components that basically operate very similarly to a water valve, where you have a controller, that the handle of the water valve, and it controls a, a separate circuit. So your manual turning of this, this dial, of this uh, valve handle, affects a water circuit. So there's two different circuits. You can visualize this as two different circuits, and one affects the other, okay? Not only is this a variable resistor, adding more resistance into this main circuit, but it can also be viewed as an on-off switch. Okay, you're turning the water on or off. It can also be viewed as an amplifier where this is controlling how much is flowing in this circuit. So you can view it as a small signal controlling a big amount of water flow. And again, as a variable resistor. Now, this concept of a controlling circuit, uh, a, a signal controlling a, a different circuit, is used many, many times in the electrical and electronics world. We have here an example of what's called a MOSFET, which is a type of transistor. And some of the earliest types of controlling valve type uh, electronic components were called transistors, which are very much like this MOSFET, where you have a gate, which is like a controlling signal. You send in a voltage or a current into this gate, and it controls what's flowing in this other circuit defined by the drain and source. So current will flow through here in this circuit based on what you're doing with this gate. Okay, so a MOSFET or a transistor, there are many, many types of components that really follow this general conceptual idea. So 
it's really good to to keep in mind these these conceptual ideas and really i would suggest you go out and play with your faucet on your garden hose and 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 think about what's going on and you can use those concepts uh, very easily with many parts of the electrical system. So now let's build an electrical circuit based on what we've learned. We've got a we've got two variable resistors, which are like variable uh, faucets, elect water faucets, and we've got a voltage which we know from before is like electrical pressure, and you're being supplied in the pipes coming into your house from the water company water at a certain pressure that's trying to be pushed through your pipe. So we're, we're kind of simulating that with this voltage source or pressure source. And we've got these two um, resistors, variable resistors. So how does it work in your house? Well, basically, you've got the voltage source and you've got pipes going through this valve. And then the, the you've got these two valves in series and then it returns back to the um, to the to the water company. OK, so what we can do is we can, in the electrical circuit, replace those valves by resistors. And we will now have a voltage source and two resistors. And that will simulate the water circuit with two valves. OK. And to make it a complete circuit, we need to, in the same way that you've got pipes connecting these valves to the water company, we need to put electrical wires to connect these into a circuit. So now, um, if you think about your water, when you have, for example, in your sink, you turn on the water faucet and the water comes out, where does it go? Well, it goes down the drain. And here's a, here's a drain in your sink. It goes down the drain, but where does it go from there? Well, it either goes back to the water company or it goes into your, into your yard in, inside a, what's called a septic tank and it filters back into the earth. OK, so either the sewer system or the septic tank. But really, that's kind of modeled by its flowing back into the earth. And it's the same way with the electrical system. Um, outside your house, you've got a, a rod that's connected into the earth, into the ground. And the return value for your electrical circuits um, that power your house go into that rod and back into the earth. So it's very similar analogy where you model a complete circuit that goes from a source of voltage, which is your electric company. It provides voltage on the lines coming into your house. And it goes through whatever load you have, resistors. And then it goes back into the earth and returns back to the power company. So it's very much like a water uh, analogy uh, doing an electrical analogy. And you've got a complete circuit. So in order for it to all flow, you need to have a complete circuit, just like with your water. You know, if you shut off a valve and stop the flow, you don't have a complete circuit. OK, so again, um, if you can think about water flowing through these lines when actually it's just electricity, but use the concept of water flowing through and blocking the flow and the pressure, um, it really might help you uh, go into your further understanding of electricity. Now, there are other components that we're not going to get into in this video because they're a little bit more complex and they don't really lend themselves to a water analogy. For example, a capacitor. A capacitor you can kind of visualize in the water world as a big enclosed tray of water where you, you turn on the faucet and fill up this tray of water. And once it gets filled up, you can't fill it anymore. And that's kind of like charging a capacitor in the electrical world. However, capacitors and inductors and also alternating currents don't really lend themselves to a water analogy uh, because they get into things that are unrelated, such as electromagnetics, and it gets a little bit more complicated. Maybe we'll talk about those in a future um, episode. But um, there are other components you should be aware of. Um, alternating current is kind of like just visualizing instead of the, the current flowing in one direction, it flows uh, in both directions in this type of uh, waveform where it goes one direction and then goes all the way in the other direction. So again, those are some, some concepts that you're going to need to um, understand to, to fully understand electrical and electronics uh, concepts. So th in the next video, we're going to talk about a very wonderful and free software tool that you can use 
uh, to help you when you're learning about electricity and electronics. Uh, it basically allows you to draw circuits with different components and decide what values you want for the components and it will run a simulation to tell you based on what you info you gave it, what components and what circuit, it will calculate the currents and the voltages and the powers for you and, and give you a graphical uh, trace like an oscilloscope to show you exactly what the result is. So it can really help you uh, if you think you know what it's going to do, it can verify for you what's going to uh, happen. So hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.